Hey guys, and welcome back to Sports Design School. We are finally back. I know it's been a few weeks since we've had our latest video, uh, but I've just been taking some time to rethink kind of our content for this channel and what we're putting out. And plus, to be honest, the Sports Design School playoff has taken a long time to edit and to configure. But I'm super excited to announce we are finally getting started with the launch of this video series, our Sports Design School playoff. And I know a lot of you guys submitted applications. I think in all in all, we had maybe over 75 plus, which we could have done really if we wanted to, a 64 person tournament, which would have just been insane. And don't worry, we will eventually. But for right now, I wanted to start our playoff career together collectively with just an eight person playoff to make it easier to manage to really kind of run through all of the kinks to make sure that we have everything streamlined for you guys by the time we're getting up to 64 people. And so I have eight super talented people uh, signed up to enter into this design competition. Here is the bracket right here that you can see. I just did a random generated bracket. Um, and so we have eight super talented designers. I can't wait to introduce you to all of them and show you kind of their work. Uh, for our prompt number one for this video. So if you remember when I first announced the Sports Design School playoff, I said each week you're going to get a prompt. Um, and each prompt would be a random scenario that I come up with. So our first scenario is Trevor Lawrence is drafted number one overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Create a graphic to share on social media that you can post um, that you might see from like Bleacher Report or SportsCenter or ESPN or something, just announcing Trevor Lawrence is the number one overall pick to the Jaguars. And that's the prompt I gave these guys, and they took that and then turned it into these awesome designs that you'll see here today and in the future and future videos. And so the way I kind of structured this video is I recorded each reaction, if you will, um, separately so that each video has their own reaction, so it's not like one big, long, cohesive video. But you'll see each video has me kind of talking through each design, kind of what's going on, breaking down some of the different aspects and things. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. If you find this video exciting and maybe want to see a 16, 32, or 64 person sports design school tournament, drop a like on this video and maybe even share it with a couple of your friends because the more people we can get in, the more awesome tournaments that we can do. But without further ado, let's just jump into this first video here. I'm super excited, excited to share that with you. So I'm super excited to start off our Sports Design School playoff, and we had so many awesome entries. These first two guys are super awesome. This guy in particular, Zachary Kilgore. Uh, looking over his portfolio, I really enjoyed his work and was excited to include him as part of our Sports Design School playoff. So I'm just going to dive in, and we're going to watch his video and break down kind of what he's doing as he's doing it. So here we go. So you can see here he uses two different artboards, which is definitely a unique style. I tried using artboards for a while. I think I used it for a few months. And then I was just so frustrating trying to figure out like the right way to export things. So I just kind of abandoned it. I do remember uh, Zachary actually said that he thought he misread the prompt or something and thought that we meant the Jets instead of the Jaguars. So the actual prompt is Trevor Lawrence gets drafted by the Jaguars. but. I guess Jets fans thought they were getting Trevor Lawrence as well, so I can't blame them. But so anyways, so he took Trevor Lawrence and put him on the Jets, and this is his design for that. So he's looking through some history right here. He had to do some research to find some former Jets quarterbacks, it's funny. Pexels.com. Uh, I plug Pexels.com literally every video, but if you don't know, Pexels.com, the best place to get high quality images that you can use in designs. So it looks like he's using like a little bit of a vintage historic vibe here. Um, kind of going with like the different historic quarterbacks. Love the font, by the way. And then he went and changed it. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, back to United. 
Okay, back to United. United is a very popular font. I see a lot of teams use it for sure. Different jet images and stuff. I think you use the... Um... Okay, cool. I think you used uh, the image select, like the, what is it called, where you can automatically have the select the image for you. I've been using that a lot lately, and it's insane how good it's gotten. It used to be so janky, and you wouldn't even be able to use it, but I'm impressed with the results. So it looks like he's going with like a new era theme for his design. I think that's Joe Namath in the background, but yep, Joe Namath. I just looked at the layers. I am not a huge Jets football connoisseur, so I have no idea. Love the coloring. And it looks like he gave up on his other artboard, at least for now. We're adding in some feet shadows. That's exactly the same way I do my feet shadows, so nicely done. It's always nice when you do something. Like, f for me, I never had any, like, former, formal, like, graphic design education. So whenever I do something, and then I see someone, oh, I like that a lot. And I see someone else do it the same way. It's like a verification that I'm doing it the right way, you know, because I just kind of, like, do whatever looks good. Like the Jets idea. I wonder where the bridge went. I like the bridge. Camera raw filter that boy. Okay. Just doing some light mat. Okay. Back to Trevor Lawrence's Twitter. Oh, looking for the signature. I got it. Okay. So it looks like he's adding the number one for the number one overall draft pick. And this is also an interesting to see like the process. A lot of people message me and say like, hey, you do all these tutorials and stuff, but what about the actual process of coming up with designs? You can see here, he's gone through like six or seven different ideas and not one like necessarily stuck out. So he keeps on trying different things. And that's what the creative process is, is continuing to try different things, maybe failing sometimes, maybe getting something that looks kind of right, but then having to tweak it a lot. And that's kind of what it is. So we just have like these two faded images in the background and some arrows in the background, a little bit abstract. I like that. And it looks like we're looking for more Jets famous people to add. Again, he's using that United font. United is an expensive font, so if you're going to go and look for it after this video, watch out because it's expensive. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I like the, the font combo. I like when you combine the bold font and then like the thinner font, font together. I think it's like a nice look. Okay, we're moving Joe Namath to the left side. A new era begins. This actually, it's interesting, it looks very similar to the Clemson style that they do. I think they use like these thin things a lot. The, by thin things, I mean thin fonts. Looking for Jets icons now. Again, we've seen so many different pro parts of the process that it's not necessarily like, oh, you just do this one thing and you're done. It's like a whole set of figuring it out. It also seems like his like Mac setup, his icons are on the left. I actually kind of like the way that looks. I have mine kind of tucked in the bottom, but maybe I should move it over to the left. Who knows? Seems easier to access. Seems like we're stuck on this thing right there. That is our prompt email that I sent out to everyone, so. And maybe this was just a, okay, here we're, we're, we're back. I know there are so many different times when I'm designing, I kind of get stuck. I literally will just like scroll on Twitter for, I mean, 
an hour or whatever and then come back to it and still be doing the same design. Looks like we're going into some blurs now. Ooh, I like that blur. Very cool. I like when you add like a blur on top and then you kind of decrease the opacity a little bit. Yeah, like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like those kind of effects. Very cool. This is also good for you guys to see that like adding a blur like that is literally just one layer. It's not like this big complicated thing. I like the dot background. I've been looking for a good dot background like that to include. Because you know like when you just have like a solid color background things can kind of get boring after a while so having like the subtle dots is a nice little effect. Looks like we're adding a gradient map. I love gradient maps, good touch. And it seems like this is where he keeps all of these overlays and stuff, very cool. I don't know what platform this is that he is keeping all this stuff in, but seems nice. Leave a comment down below. Are you organized as a designer? Or are you kind of messy? Because I am all over the place in terms of trying to find different assets. They're all probably in my downloads folder. Um, just all over the place when I need to find them. Looks like we're going through camera raw making some last minute revisions on lighting and stuff. Cool, cool, cool. Saving the file, of course. And there we have it. That is Zachary Kilgore um, with his awesome design he put for us put together for us. And I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you to Zachary. Uh, if you enjoyed his uh, design, make sure you just send him a nice message down in the comments. As always, it's important to remind everyone that as we're going through this process, design is an art form and everyone is a different artist. And so uh, showing appreciation for people when they let us peek into their process is something that's super important. So thank you so much to Zachary. I think the design was awesome. But yeah, that's it for his design. Now let's move on to the next design that we'll cover here. And now we have this submission from Ben Westlake. Now Ben is one of those guys when he submitted his application for the sports design school playoff I was super excited to invite him into our tournament. I knew I definitely wanted him to be included. Uh, ben is an awesome designer. I love his work. I'll definitely recommend checking out his work. Um, I'll link him down in the description if you want to check out more of his work for sure. But I'm excited to see kind of what he came up with so let's dive in. So here we are. Oh, it looks a little glitchy. But that's all right. And so I don't think Zachary, he didn't do a jersey swap with his last design. It looks from at least the early bits here that Ben is going to do that. So you can see he is going through and removing all of the elements of a jersey. So when you're going through the jersey swap, you need kind of a blank template to be able to go through and then change things and add things on top of that. So that's what he's doing here is getting rid of the Clemson logos on all the different parts using the, it looks like the pen tool to kind of select his area and then using a clone stamp tool. Um, I have a Jersey swap tutorial coming out kind of soon where we'll dive into some of this stuff. Um, and I have actually planned on doing a whole series on that. So stay tuned for that. The numbers can be kind of tricky, especially when the lighting is like this. Like you'll notice on this image how there's a bit of a shadow. So getting the clone stamp tool to work really well can be a little bit frustrating. But he seems to be doing a good job. Nice job, Ben. And so we have that. Nicely done. So it looks like, and I could be wrong, he's just removing the stroke and then leaving the white parts of the image. Um, maybe to keep... I guess the block numbers are probably somewhat similar to what the Jaguars do. And so um, it looks like that might be the approach he's going for. And so you can see it looks like it, he did a pretty good job in terms of creating a clean plate to change some things. Now he has a new 
layer and it looks like he just is taking a brush and brushing a clipping mask onto his cutout that he created. And he just has a teal color. Now some people do this differently. Some people use just like a hue saturation slider. Some people just use the um, brush tool and then set their blending mode to hue, which is what he's done here. Uh, but it's always interesting seeing the different methods for jersey swaps. Yeah, it's looking really sharp so far. Okay, now we got our reference image. Looks like a Gardner Minshew image. Now, I'm actually going through and putting together these videos all at once. And so this is actually like the third person that's used that exact same Gardner Minshew image as a reference. So it's a popular image, I guess. Cool, so it looks like you just took everything and made a color fill. I love doing that, just using, hitting command and selecting whatever brush you've done and then doing a color fill. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it, but... Okay, so we have a new file open. I guess this was his reference image for the 6, and then he's going back to the gardener for the 1. The very popular gardener image. We got them combined together. And you can see one kind of looks a little bit off-white and one looks a little bit pure white. And he took them and then kind of um, morphed them to where they're the same color, which is good. Good on him for that. Looks like we're adding some numbers to the shoulders. And it does look like the 1-6 looks very similar to the Clemson 1-6 that he uses for the chest right there, so he might just be able to get away with not doing anything at all. Adding the Nike Chucks. Do you call it a Nike Chuck or Nike Swoosh? Going through, just getting rid of the face mask altogether. So I've seen a couple different ways of doing this. Um, the one I'm so mystified by is the way Ryan Warford did it. He's also in this tournament. Um, he just had like a, it looked like he was almost just painting on the face mask. Um, I'll have to send him a message and see what he was doing there. I kind of sped it up too much to where I couldn't really see on his, but. So here you have him warping using the warp tool to get the helmet to match. It's a very popular way of doing it. And here we are taking that part of the helmet, okay. So it looks like that was a part of the orange that's kind of seeping through. It's hard when you're working with a bright color and you're trying to turn it black. Anywhere that like is not completely covered kind of seeps through, which can be an issue. And is it, it looks like he just took a, was that a black brush that he was just painting everything on? Cool, we have a field. And a little bit of a white to black gradient overlay on our cutout. And then adding some shading to his feet. Again, kind of similar to the way I do it. Going through and then it looks like adding some overlay to the field to kind of blend it. Very nice. I find like the shadow between the feet and the cutout itself is such an important point where it kind of really brings in your cutout into the image and if your feet kind of look off then it looks not, I mean it, it looks photoshopped regardless but it doesn't look to that level of realness that you really want it to so it's good that he spent a good amount of time on that for sure. Here we have the TIA bank field. Ooh, I like, okay, that looks very cool in the background. Let me know if you've ever been to TIA bank field. I've been a few times, not my favorite stadium, that's for sure. And he's going through, playing around with the lighting. Very nice. Now we're playing around with the field itself. 
Really getting like that dark look. I like it though. And then going around and playing with the shading. This is also very important for sure. Now, another thing I've learned through watching this video is, is so many different people have different methods of shading and mine is definitely not the same as a lot of people's. So it's interesting seeing um, just different approaches and stuff. Some people use the brightness, some people use the exposure, some people just use a black brush. Oh, I like that lens flare for sure. I find uh, lens flares to be a good tool to kind of like mask any imperfections I have, where you can just kind of throw it on top and then it, the color kind of works itself out. Adding a little bit of a blur to the background. Adding a color lookup. I've never, I don't really dabble in color lookups that much, but maybe I'm missing out. We have another lens flare. Oh, I like that one. Very nice. First overall. That kind of looks like the Colts font a little bit. Okay. And it looks like he has, yep, so this is Factoria. This is one of the fonts I talked about in my best free fonts video. I think it's part two. Adding some noise. It looks like we're getting down to the end here. I guess he's adding some, maybe some smoke to the background or something to further blend the field with the stands. Adding the little Jaguar logo, very cool. And then a gold overlay. I love the gold on top of the teal. I wish Photoshop had a way, and maybe it does, I don't know, where you can just press a button and auto align to the center, kind of like Illustrator and InDesign have. And that's it. Wow, that's awesome. So that was Ben Westlake. I'll put up his graphic here so you guys can check it out. And I really enjoyed it. It was awesome seeing his process. Uh, definitely loved his use of the jersey swap, loved his use of color, loved the gold that he used. Um, was really impressed by his design and thankful for him for entering into our playoff. But now it's up to you guys. So you guys decide who you want to move on to the next round of our Sports Design School playoff, either Zachary Kilgore or Ben Westlake. Again, I'll put the link in the description. It's, it'll be a Google form where you'll be able to go in and fill out which one you think should move on to the next round. I'm super excited for the results, guys. Stay tuned to our channel. We have lots of new videos coming out soon, including several videos as part of our Sports Design School playoff series. And again, I mentioned it earlier in the video, but our Jersey Swap tutorial series, I promise, is coming soon. So many of you have been asking for it for so long, and I promise I will get it to you. Uh, it's just one of those things, got a lot going on, but I'll get to it eventually, I promise. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.